If you're interested to see what I picked up from TK Maxx for Halloween and sewing, then do keep on watching. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're well. If you're new here, my name's Emily. Today I want to share with you a really, really quick TK Maxx autumnal Halloween Samhain decor haul because I know, like me, a lot of you witchy folks are really, really keen on this time of year. I've already shared a little home sense haul with you. I picked up some autumnal and Halloween-y Samhain style decor from Home Sense not too long ago and shared a haul. And I, of course I had to do the obligatory TK Maxx haul as well, it is just required. In case you're new here and you don't know, I have another channel. I actually have three channels now. I started a lifestyle channel about three years ago and I recently have just sort of left that one dormant and started a new one because I felt like I needed a fresh start and because, you know, I've had experience now editing for a few years and making thumbnails and such and I just wanted a fresh start with it. So I have started a new channel which I will link below and on screen and there is where I'm sharing like the majority of the haul as a kind of overall home decor autumnal haul but because I am witchy and I have this channel and I love it so much and I know a lot of you enjoy picking up sort of seasonal decor around Halloween and Samhain as well because like me you kind of live for this time of year I really really do so I thought I would just share the bits that I picked up from TK Maxx with you that are sort of Halloween Samhain appropriate because I have some plans for some of them which I didn't speak about on my other video because that video is more of a lifestyle channel with fashion, beauty and I don't really go into the witchy topic so much there. That's what this channel is for and if you're here that's probably what you want to see. I just wanted to explain that a little bit just in case you're aware of my other channel and you can see them both and you're wondering if they're the same. They are kind of but not exactly because I'm going to explain a little bit more about how I'm going to use some of these pieces that I didn't really explain in the other video. So in the previous video where I shared the bits from HomeSense, I also shared some of the bits that I picked up like last year and the year before from HomeSense and TK Maxx and Home Bargains and Amazon even. I've got my pumpkin here. I just can't, I just a gush over this pumpkin. So I won't labour too much on some of those things but you can see some of them are just sort of hanging around and I really really think that there's value in like collecting over a couple of years. So like pick up a few bits that you like each year and then in a few years you'll have like an abundant collection of pumpkins and skulls that is just glorious and then your entire house is like transformed. But seriously though, there were so many beautiful pieces and some of them I think could be used in really, really magical ways. So I'm going to share with you the footage from TK Maxx because there were some amazing spooky decor and some items as well that I think that you can actually utilise in your magical practice. So I'm going to insert the footage now. So you can see it was just absolutely gorgeous and I actually found that I regretted not picking some things up. I think it's just kind of the thing, you go and then you try and be like conservative or for me I didn't want to break stuff so I didn't bring lots of stuff with me but oh my gosh I wish I had bought more. I really really do so I'm going to have to go back, I'm just going to have to go back to both and probably do another video. So yeah, if you don't enjoy these videos then feel free to click off, you don't have to watch it but if you do want to see then yeah I'm going to get into it now, I'll stop talking now. 
So the first thing I picked up was this gorgeous mug and it's got the beautiful Dia de las Mortes Mexican Day of the Dead skulls on either side. They're really subtle actually. This definitely needs a wash, it's got like fingerprints on it. I wish I'd bought more of these. This is like a glass mug that you can use for like a pumpkin latte or like a chai tea or hot chocolate which some of you might know is one of like my favourite things. So I'm so excited for this but also if you have an ancestor altar and you work with ancestors or spirits you could definitely do an offering of coffee in here. I know that that's quite common for certain spirits and definitely I have offered coffee to some of my ancestors before. So I think that's a beautiful way to use this in your magical practice and something I will definitely be doing as well. That's not something I mentioned in the other video. So yeah, I think it is beautiful for that. The only thing is I'm just wondering if I should get another and have one for me and then one for my ancestors. So I keep one sort of like sacred for them. And that's something I think I'll think about doing. But I just just think it's just beautiful. I love it so much. If you've watched any of my other videos, you may have seen I have a Day of De Las Mortes tray that I picked up a few years ago from TK Maxx, and I actually use that as part of my ancestor altar. And it tends to be in the background of some of my workings because I usually have my oil burner on there and stuff. So you might have seen that. It is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Again, that was from TK Maxx a few years ago. There are some amazing pieces, so do check them out. And I just think this is beautiful for spirit work or ancestor work if you have an ancestor altar and you currently do ancestor veneration. So another piece is this beautiful skull wine glass. And again, with the Dia de los Muertos, Mexican Day of the Dead, decorative features on that. This is much more colorful, definitely suitable for a party if you're that way inclined. But I also thought this would be a beautiful offering goblet for wine or spirits, liquor, for your ancestors, dearly departed loved ones or spirits, etc. if you make offerings like that to them. I think just really, really beautiful to use as like a chalice specifically for your ancestor altar. And again, I really wanna have wine out of this though, so I think I need to get another one so I can have one for me and maybe one for the hubby. I'm not sure he's really that into it though, but maybe one for me and then one for my ancestors and then I can literally have a glass of wine with my ancestors, which I, I suddenly feel quite emotional, but literally the ancestors that I work with are mostly dearly departed loved ones. And after one of them passed, I did literally pour that person a glass of wine and myself a glass of wine and I sat with that person and prayed and spoke to them and it was just beautiful and so I do feel kind of emotional now but the idea that I could make an offering to my dearly departed loved ones and it to be so special and to have a piece like this that is just really really beautiful and decorative I know it seems so stupid I'm literally like crying because of this beautiful piece but it's not that it's more than that like and it, it is coming into this time of year you know this is the magic of this time of year the power of it and I've been feeling it for a while now I think literally it's not stopped since like Beltane I've just had that feeling and last Christmas my grandmother passed and I was struggling to find a picture to put in a frame of her and she's been such a huge part of my life my entire life I actually knew the picture I wanted but I couldn't find it and my parents found it the other day and I actually used a photo frame from my previous Home Sense haul for that picture and it is on my ancestor altar at the moment and it is so beautiful working with them uh, literally doing this work it does move me to tears only recently I think just the other day Taryn from the House of Witchcraft actually posted a video about working with ancestors and dearly departed spirits and when Taryn was talking about that I realised you know it really is something that has been very much kind of percolating within me for these last months and I had this sort of on my mind that I needed to make sure I had everything set up before I felt that we were going into autumn because I feel like I'm being called much more to do more of this work in this time and yeah it is definitely more work it is work that I definitely do more of in the latter half of the year I'm sorry about getting emotional but this is just it what it makes me feel and the honest intention for this is actually to use it for my ancestral altar I also want one to drink wine out of those so again I think I'm gonna have to get another so that is going to be the plan I think when I go back and get another. I might look online actually to see if I can get one online and then I won't have to drive there again. But beautiful piece, I love it and it's just one of the ways that you can work with it. And then I picked up these gorgeous pumpkin candles and these are from Bella Lux and they had 
some bronzy ones, some like orangey gold brushed ones, and then these beautiful white ones. And I thought the white ones were so beautiful. They're so my style, my aesthetic. But also I thought that way they could be used for a number of intentions. Obviously the use of like the shape of the pumpkin is a lot about abundance and harvest and reaping, all of that good stuff. And so I think that you could definitely do like some prosperity magic with this, but also because of the white colour, you could use them for sort of blessing spells as well. But basically any candle workings, I think I'm going to use these for. But first I think I want to have them out a little bit and decorate with them a bit. And then use them for some magical workings. So yeah, that is definitely what I have in mind for these. And I think they are just going to be beautiful, like on a plate with some pumpkin seeds around them. Maybe some mugwort. Mugwort is one of my favourite herbs to work with. Some rosemary as well, bringing in that sort of like ancestral veneration. You could even use these in like your ancestral rituals for Samhain or if you wanted to do like an abundance ritual you could use pumpkin seeds you could use like sunflower seeds bringing in that sun energy and then some other herbs like rose for abundance and luck and calling in that energy and anything else that's sort of seasonal whatever is in your garden or if you don't have a garden if you have a plant pot if you have a, a cupboard of herbs then utilizing basil or utilizing dry mint those kinds of herbs are perfect for this and bay as well for prosperity for for bringing in abundance, calling in that abundance and that prosperity to you. You could also do a protection working around this time of year, you know, protecting yourself and your home, calling in your spirits, calling in your ancestors and putting that protection magic on your home. So there are so many different ways that you can actually work magic with these kinds of decorative items as well, so don't forget that. I know a lot of you are watching from the States and obviously you probably already do this stuff, but I know you guys have so many amazing stores like Michael's and you have TJ Maxx as well and you have just home goods and all these amazing stores that have these amazing items and just think a little bit outside the box if you don't already about how you can use them and the ways in which you can use them in your magic because I think there's loads of amazing ways that you could use these kinds of decorative items for this time of year to inform your magic and to create some really, really powerful, powerful workings. And I also picked up this beautiful vase. Now, I don't particularly have anything magical planned for this, but you could use this for displaying seasonal flowers or herbs in your apothecary or in your sacred space. If you work with herbs, which I do, then this might be something that you'll enjoy. Otherwise, maybe some pampas grass, that's what I was thinking of using it for. But I do think it's a beautiful piece. And I think that probably a lot of people would use this in a magical way. And why not? Even if it is just a decorative item, it can still be magical because you can still imbue it. You can literally paint a sigil on the underside of it and then put some pampas grass in and charm the whole lot of it as a kind of like harvest decor piece that brings in prosperity and comfort and joy into the home and it's kind of that central piece if you had it on a dining table or on a mantelpiece or somewhere or even on your altar space you know and it can kind of be a hub for all of that beautiful energy and I think you can do magic like that with decor around your house so easily you can so easily do magic like that around your house with the decor that you already have without even too much effort because it all comes back to this kind of energetic magic and then visualization as well and then putting your intention and your power behind it and then using any other correspondences like herbs or whatever candles that you want to use so I think that there are some amazing ways that you can make magic with some of these decorative items and I just wanted to share them with you because I was so thrilled about them finally I picked up this gorgeous plate again with this beautiful skull it's kind of got the Dea de las Mortos vibes as well but less so because it's not so colorful but I just love the muted tones it feels very very beautiful for something like a dumb supper you could get four or six of these and do a full dumb supper ritual with this I only picked up one and I'm planning to either use it literally for cakes around Halloween or for candle workings with the pumpkins and with other candles and stuff around this time of year. I think I'll probably do the latter and then get another plate that I can use for cakes and stuff. This is literally what I've realised that I need two of everything so that one can be for more sacred magical workings and the other can be more for sort of home and decor and not to say it's not magical because it is literally everything I've just said. You can make magic out of the decor in your home and out of the, the mundane items and I have a video a few weeks back talking literally about that, how you can witch with mundane items. But I think because I want to use these for ritual, because I want to use these in my ancestor altar, it feels right to me to have something separate. And also if I'm going to be burning candles on this plate, I do want it to be 
just for candles. I don't want anyone to be eating off it particularly. So I think that that just makes sense to me to get another one. So I think what I'll do first is look online, see if I can get more of what I already have. If not, I think I'll just have to go back and get more because yeah, I just, I need more of this in my life. So that's pretty much everything witchy that I picked up from TK Maxx. If you did want to see the full haul on my lifestyle channel, I will link that below. Do click over and check that out if you're interested in fashion, beauty, lifestyle, home, motherhood, any of those things, if you're interested in that, then that's where I talk more about those kinds of topics. I don't really touch on magic much. Sometimes I mention spirituality or the law of attraction, those kinds of things that are a little bit more easy to talk about with people who aren't so witchy inclined. I think for a really long time I didn't even want to speak to this to why I have two different channels I mean the main reason is that when I first decided to start a channel it was because I was a mum I wanted to speak to those topics it had never really occurred to me to speak about magical witchcraft or tarot on YouTube it was only when I started to look for sort of documentaries that I wanted to watch or like flip throughs of decks that I started to fall down the kind of tarot witchcraft magic YouTube rabbit hole and I decided to make a channel about that as well because I already knew how to have a YouTube channel kind of maybe not well but I already had a YouTube channel so I knew I could speak to a camera and I had so much I wanted to add to the community and to say so I think I've never really spoken about that much but that's the reason why I have sort of two separate channels. I started my Tarot Witchcraft channel around October, November last year, 2020. I'd been sort of mulling it over for about nine months before that but I felt like I was just too stretched and I just didn't have the space but it got to the point where I just wanted to respond to topics so I decided not to put pressure on myself. I've been practicing witchcraft since I was about 11. It's when I first discovered the craft and came to the craft so researching and learning and practicing and I practiced all through my teens and then I came to learn about tarot when I was 17, 18. I was learning tarot and I absolutely loved that whole process and then I had some ups and downs in my 20s when I literally didn't have like mental space to be practicing so I had a little bit of time away and then sort of later in my 20s like feeling more grounded more centered more okay and sort of then able to practice again and it's really really interesting now retrospectively looking at my journey from the get-go and then looking at times when I wasn't exactly practicing how I am now or how I was at the beginning I still practiced I still did magic it was just different and subtle and so I've been thinking about making a video about those kinds of slumps that you go through when you are a witch or you have a magical practice or a spiritual practice or you practice tarot in any of these kind of ways whatever your paradigm is whether you're spiritual or whether you're a secular witch or whether you wouldn't call yourself a witch but you like practicing tarot and it's more of a psychological tool for you whatever your view is whatever your paradigm is I still think that we we naturally go through these cycles where we dip in and out but there can be incredible growth during those times and I think it can be easy to kind of write it off and almost regret those times we weren't practicing but I think those are the times we're learning the most and actually practicing some of the most potent magic I actually manifested some really potent things during those times so I think it's really really interesting and it's just got me thinking a lot about it and potentially I'd like to speak to it and if you are interested in that if you would like to hear about my experiences and you'd like to sort of discuss ideas ways in which we can sort of help each other through these kind of dips these spiritual slumps or these kind of feelings where we're going up and down these cycles how we can kind of give ourselves the grace to move through that and allow ourselves to have that space that we need to reflect and kind of look at everything that we've been through and even just have headspace you know because our lives might be very busy and going through what we're going through might be a lot and having that headspace is really really important so giving ourselves that sort of grace to say you know it's okay if I'm not practicing today it's okay if I'm not practicing this month it's okay if I'm not practicing for this whole year or even these two years however long that period has to be for you even just setting it aside for a day if that is what you want to do whatever is right for you and I think no one can tell you that apart from you but I think it's a really interesting topic and I've been thinking about speaking to it so if you're interested in discussing that topic or hearing more about my experience with that and you'd like me to make a video then do let me know in the comments box below I'd love to hear your thoughts and that basically wraps up today's little mini Halloween Samhain haul from TK Maxx as I said I'm going to look again online see if I can pick up some of these bits again so that I can have one for like me consuming wine and then one for my 
dearly departed loved ones consuming wine. <laughs> and I think it's just really beautiful sharing these pieces like this and I love talking about how mundane items can be magical. So if you haven't checked out that video as well, I will link it above and below so that you can check out that video as well. So with all that said, thank you again so much for joining me. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Let me know below what your favourite piece was or if you have any other ideas about how you would use these pieces, these items in a magical way. And also let me know if you've picked up anything, if you're excited to pick up anything, if you're looking for anything in particular, I'd love to hear that. If you did enjoy the video, please do click the like button, give the video a thumbs up, share it with anyone who you think would enjoy it as well. And also if you'd like to see more from me around tarot, witchcraft, magic, spirituality and occult, then do think about subscribing. And while you subscribe, don't forget to hit that little bell notification because that's how YouTube is going to let you know when I create and upload videos like this more along the lines of tarot and witchcraft and magic as well. So thank you again so much for joining me. I hope that you have an amazing rest of your day and take care of yourselves and I look forward to seeing you again in another video really soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.